Okay, for day, today for science, we're gonna continue reading Hidden Figures, the true story of four black women and the space race. So please take out your book and follow along. In the 1950s, the Langley Laboratory bought a machine computer that could do math faster than the human computers. At first, these machines made mistakes. Dorothy learned how to program the machines so that they got the right answers. She taught the women in her group how to program the computers too. Turn the page. In 1957, Russia launched a satellite known as Sputnik into orbit around the Earth. The United States started building satellites to explore space too. For years, the laboratory had used math to design airplanes. Now it would need math to create spaceships as well. The government decided to change the agency's name from the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics to the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA. In 1961, President John F. Kennedy told Congress, I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to earth. A man on the moon, but the first step to getting a man on the moon was to send an astronaut around the earth. NASA was going to need to hire more space experts and more people who were good at math really good. All right, here we go. The people at the laboratory had to work together from morning to night to figure out how to send astronauts John Glenn, astronaut John Glenn, and bring him back home to Earth safely. Katherine Johnson knew she could use math to help. Tell me where you want his spaceship to land and I'll tell you where to launch it, Katherine told her boss. Katherine helped calculate the trajectories or pathways that rockets travel through space. She had to plan Glenn's exact route from takeoff in Florida to splash down in the Atlantic Ocean. There was no room for error. No one was better than Catherine at solving these tricky math problems. Days before his mission, John Glenn wanted Catherine to double check the, machines, the machine computer's trajectory calculations to make sure it hadn't made any mistakes. When Catherine said the numbers were correct, Glenn was ready to go. On February 20th, 1962, Glenn blasted off into space circled the earth and made his way home safely. Meanwhile, laws began to change so that black and white students could go to school together. Blacks fought for the right to sit beside whites on buses and to drink from the same water fountains. At the laboratory, black and white computers started working together in the same offices, eating at the same lunch tables, and using the same bathrooms. Black and white moviegoers could sit next to each other in the same theater. Across the country, people started to think about ways to bring equality to all Americans. The people at the laboratory prepared for years to send astronauts to the moon, about 238,900 miles away from the Earth. 
Finally, on July 20th, 1969, the world watched as the three men arrived at the moon in their Apollo 11 spacecraft. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, said astronaut Neil Armstrong when he stepped onto the dusty surface. But it was also a giant leap for Dorothy, Mary, Catherine, Christine, and all the other computers and engineers who had worked at the laboratory over the years. The moon landing was a success from takeoff to splashdown, but there was no time for rest. Once NASA landed astronauts on the moon, the people at the laboratory began dreaming of sending humans to other planets, such as Mars or Jupiter or Saturn. They started to imagine hyper-fast space planes that could travel around the Earth at seven times the speed of sound. The next adventure wouldn't be easy and would require lots of tests and lots more numbers. But Dorothy, Mary, Catherine, and Christine knew one thing. With hard work, perseverance, and a love of math, anything was possible. Thanks for listening today. We will do the timeline and the meeting the computers part on Thursday.